Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This video is all about tough evergreen ground covers. I got 10 in this video. I actually have hundreds of photos of different ground covers I have taken over the years. I like to use ground covers in places that I don't want to mulch in the future. So I can use, I can get the ground covered and it'd be kind of a check mark uh, for maintenance. I may, maybe once a year I've got to cut it to the ground or something like that. But other than that, most of these things will be very, very little maintenance and they'll keep their foliage through the winter. Although some would like to be reset in the late winter by cutting them back. So if you followed my channel for any length of time, it won't surprise you that this Brigadoon St. John's wort will be the first thing I'm gonna show off. This is a fantastic gold foliage ground cover St. John's wort. Uh, some St. John's worts can, you know, some hypericum can get, you know, two and three feet in height and even taller than that. There's species that will get uh, almost tree formed. Uh, but this uh, particular one is a ground cover and this is about as tall as it ever gets. You're looking at in the photo here. This is taken a little later in the summer, so it's lost a little bit of that gold pop. So even, but even toward the end of summer, it's still looking pretty good. It blooms with a uh, yellow flower that you'd expect on most um, St. John's worts. Uh, little frilly looking flower that the pollinators absolutely love. Uh, again, it leaves out in the spring and it has kind of a pink on the newest growth and then it settles into a bright chartreuse color and then late summer, typical of a lot of chartreuse plants, it'll lose a little bit of that color. These are evergreen, uh, but I mow them down to the ground in the very late winter and let all new foliage come back in its place and that seems to keep them the freshest looking. But again, one of my absolute favorite go-to ground covers is Brigadoon St. John's Wort. Next up is gonna be a Carex called Everillo. Again, this is one I show off on the channel quite a bit. There are a lot of Carexes that work great as ground covers. There are native and non-native species of Carex. In fact, there's like 3,000 species of Carex overall. Elvarillo is unique because of its really, again, bright, vibrant gold foliage. Again, though, toward the end of summer, you'll see it fade uh, just a bit. It'll get a little flower spike on it that's pretty insignificant. Uh, again, these are evergreen. Uh, in colder areas, and th these will grow, almost everybody watching can grow these. In colder areas, they tend to die back a bit and get a bit of damage during the winter time, and you can cut them back in the late winter. Uh, those of you in the deeper south, if they're not, if they're looking good coming out of winter, you just leave them alone uh, and let them be. These are three that I have at my house in a particularly tough, dry summer and a little more sun than they would like to be in. And this is about as tattered as they've gotten toward late summer. So this is a winter I'm probably going to cut them back. I'll just wait until March before the new growth starts on them and I'll cut them back and they'll come back completely fresh like the photos that you saw earlier. Um, but again, most, most, last summer they held up beautifully and I had, there was no reason to cut them back uh, whatsoever. But this is Everillo Carex, just a fantastic pop of color in the garden. It's gonna cover some ground and uh, reduce the amount of mulch you're having to use. So I have to include ground cover sedums. It's gonna depend on where you live as to which ones uh, you'll use, but there are gold uh, colored sedums and green foliage sedums. Most of them stay evergreen, again, depending on depending on where you are. Uh, I have found that most of them like some moisture in the soil. It looks like a plant that wouldn't like all that much moisture, but they tend to do absolutely fine uh, in, moist, in moist growing conditions. And you can see how they're just forming around these rocks uh, at this J.C. Ralston uh, uh, bed. Uh, just to, you know, again, there's lots and lots of different ground cover sedums. When you go to the garden centers, box stores, wherever, you're gonna see lots of different ones. You can pick variegated ones multicolored ones, green ones, small leaves, big leaves, uh, ones that bloom a little heavier with you know, bright yellow flowers and ones that are less, um, you know, less uh, floriferous. But again, ground cover sedum for sure for a great evergreen ground cover. I've done many, many tour videos over the years that included Mondo grass, uh, full-size Mondo grass, dwarf Mondo, black Mondo, variegated Mondo, uh, and Mondo grasses that typically aren't even for sale that are you know more specialty mondo grasses they're all fantastic for slightly moist uh, shade conditions uh, and they'll grow in in drier shade conditions too but they tend to really perform well up around rocks and places where they can get into a crevice and and, and stay moist uh, and cool in between rains and watering and that's why they work so well in between stepping stones and things that you'll see lots of in lots of my tour videos but again you can see them here around around these walls and stepping stones and that kind of thing. There's a dwarf Mondo uh, sliding up underneath that one. And then here's one, you know, it's just a clumping 
uh, mondo grass. So there are lots of other different other species and other interesting mondo grasses out in the world as well. Just great shade, grass-like plants uh, that uh, really are kind of underutilized as a, as a group. It's not, you know, they see dwarf mondo grass everywhere, but there's actually lots of other interesting mondo grasses out there as well, including mo black mondo, which we have in our garden in Raleigh. Next up is one I have many of in the garden at the house is ground cover ajuga. Uh, this is from this Feathered Friends series. Uh, this is that um, Parrot Paradise, a really, really interesting one uh, with that green and purple uh, in the leaf and it's changeable during the growing season. It tends to uh, have more of that uh, coloration in the leaf early in the season. Of course, they'll get the, they'll get the flowers with spikes on them as well. They're in that mint family and so the, you know, the rabbits and deer and such tend to avoid them. Really easy ground covers. Another one that likes to stay slightly moist uh, and, uh, you know, does well in those kind of conditions. If it's on the drier side in the shady space, it tends to just linger a bit or even get smaller if it's really, really dry shade. So you kind of have to identify the shade, you know, conditions that you have. If it's going to be a space that's really dry and it's not going to be watered very often, a juga might not be for you. This is one I think that's absolutely underused. This is Mullenbeckia or wire vine. Uh, this particular one at the Ralston Arboretum is called Tricolor. You can't really tell it here because I've taken the photos in the late summer, but this one has a bit of a variegation to it. Also has great red stems on it. And you can see the amount of area that this one has covered. Uh, it's right at one of the entrances, you know, one of the, one of the ways you come around uh, to the main building at the Ralston Arboretum, and it's covered this entire bank. Won't be able to tell from this photo all that much, but this is about a three, maybe as much as a five foot slope here going down to where that hellebore is. And it just has taken all that space. It's zero maintenance really, uh, and it stays evergreen. I don't really ever talk about liriope on the channel that much. There are actually tons of interesting liriopes. There's giant liriopes, smaller growing liriopes, ones that are more floriferous than others, uh, that, you know, just much heavier flowering, uh, lots of different variegations, white variegations, creamy white variegations, yellow variegations, really a lot to offer in liriope. I tend not to line them up like this along edges of paths and sidewalks and things. Uh, I tend to use them, you know, in a clump, you know, of like seven or something like that and, and put them less linear. But lots of people like to just line sidewalks and things like that with them. And that makes total sense. This one you're looking at is called Biggin uh, or Cleopatra is what it's been sold under uh, out in the trade. And uh, it's a great little compact variety that gets lots and lots of flowers. These tend to bloom for most folks uh, in late summer. Um, and uh, you know, put on a pretty good show. This is another one I cut to the ground in the late winter uh, to give it a refresh because all the old tired foliage is just ready to come off and you get a whole new fresh looking plant with fresh flowers the next year as well. Next up is ground cover junipers. This one has a beautiful kind of bluish green coloration on it. It's one that's kind of under, definitely underused. It's called Emerald Sea uh, Shore Juniper. Just a great looking plant. Uh, and so, so, you know, uh, we've seen, we see gold ones, uh, you know, like all gold that I've shown many times on the channel. And then you'll see blue rug, blue Pacific, uh, just uh, lots and lots of different kinds of ground cover junipers. I have videos on the channel for all kinds of varieties of ground cover junipers. I, there's definitely, they're definitely extremely useful on dry banks where we want to uh, reduce the amount of mulching we're having to do on them, amount of climbing up and down the banks, the amount of mowing we're doing on them. Uh, that kind of thing. They, do, they grow down the hill only, so you don't really need to plant them down at the bottom of the hill. If you're trying to cover a bank, plant most of them toward the top, upper two thirds of the bank and they'll actually grow down it uh, in time. But definitely can't have a, a, ground, a tough ground, evergreen ground cover video without mentioning uh, ground cover junipers. Next up is Asiatic Jasmine. I could do my own, uh, just a video by itself on 10 different interesting Asiatic Jasmine. This is regular variegata late summer, so it's lost a bit of the variegation uh, that you would typically see in it. You can still see some variegation in it here, but by late summer, a little less. Uh, this is another one, if you give it a haircut in the late winter, when it flushes back out, most of the new growth will have that brighter variegation, and it'll just lose it over the course of a really hot, dry summer. I want you to pay attention to the fact that this is under a tree in a parking lot, and 
it is really, really in a tough spot. Uh, super, super hot next to that asphalt on one side, this brick on the other, and a tree growing right in the center of it. You know, how can you beat an evergreen ground cover that that's an area that doesn't have to be mulched and it doesn't really even have to be watered. Uh, it's under drought stress, as you can see in this photo, but first sign of water uh, and it'll snap right back out of that. So uh, any Asiatic jasmine you can find, and there's ones with really, really bright variegations and then of course solid greens. Also some differentiation in the size of the, fall, of the leaves as well. Number 10, I'm gonna give a shout out to a native Selaginella. Uh, this is Selaginella apoda and it's native to the eastern United States, uh, likes moist shade conditions, really tight, dense, compact habit. There's lots and lots of species of Selaginella, and these are club mosses. They're not actual mosses, and they're not ferns. They're their own thing. Uh, they're all super interesting. Uh, I have an arborvita fern at the house. It's a different species. It gets more like 15, 18 inches tall. Uh, uh, over time and then this one just stays incredibly tight and compact and will just you know grow less than an inch in height cover some space in a moist shade condition a raised this one's in a raised bed behind a retaining wall at the Ralston Arboretum just an incredible plant this is an incredible native that very few people really know anything about or would consider putting in their garden but if you have moist shade condition I highly recommend this native plant and again, it's just zero maintenance. And if it needs to be weeded, if you happen to have a few weeds in there, which it grows, grows so dense, you're not going to get many weeds in it. But if it is, the weeds will always be taller and they'll be easy, very easy to pull out of it. Uh, but again, this is a, a Selaginella, a native Selaginella that um, I absolutely adore. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a video series over on my website called the Learn to Garden video series. You buy it once, you own it forever. I'm adding content to it continually, teaching all things gardening, and there'll be ground cover videos over there as well if you're interested in uh, lots and lots of different ground covers that I have photographed uh, over the years and additional information on those. There's a discount code below the video uh, if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for following along. Lots more videos like this coming up on different types of plants for your ornamental landscapes. Thanks for watching.